Alrighty, so I'm actually late because uh, <laughs> uh, if you could believe it, I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh over Discord <laughs> with physical cards. Uh, anyways, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, so the banner is going to be a double droll banner, which is actually really interesting. I think this is a pretty pretty good skip banner, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know exactly what the drolls do. I know one of them can petrify, but uh, we're going to go over them a little bit just because I legitimately don't know what they do. I'm not trying to like pad time on the video or anything like that, but um, yeah. New heroes, we're getting blue and green droll, which is really interesting. I know that like some of the teams on JP actually do run a droll. I don't know which one they run, but uh, it I, I don't know. He may be an okay unit. I just don't know anything about him. I don't particularly think I'm going to spend any gems on the banner because I'm not really interested in him, to be honest. But uh, I don't know. We'll look at it. Actually, before we get into the rest of this, let's go ahead and do a quick overview. I'm not going to go too hard on this. So uh, increases allies attack by 3% for every buff on the hero. So that's kind of interesting. Um, his commandment is apply a buff that increases resistance by 30% for three turns every time an ally or enemy receives damage from skills in PvP. Okay, so he is a PvP unit, um, which means I probably don't have a whole lot of interest in, in him, honestly, because I don't really play a lot of competitive PvP. Um, inflicts damage equal to 200%, 200% uh, and Petrify, so this is probably the one that they use on JP, and then 250% and petrifies for two turns, so that's kind of interesting. It's kind of, I mean, obviously it's not as good as, you know, King's cards or anything like that, but I don't know. I'm pretty much the same thing, honestly. Uh, anyways, uh, heavy metal, so it's kind of like DM. Taunts enemies and increases HP-related stats by 15% for one turn. Becomes immune to petrification effect, so that's kind of interesting. Um... That's actually a good counter for King in general, because people run King a lot. Taunts enemies, and then 20% for two turns, and then 30% for two turns. Okay, interesting. Flex charge equal to 455% of attack on all enemies. So it's an AoE ult, which is kind of nice. I feel like they don't really do a whole lot of AoE ults anymore. Um, so that was blue droll. Green droll is every time an enemy's uh, ultimate gauge reaches five disable ultimate moves for two turns okay so I, if i'm not mistaken i remember when this one came out on jp and people were really interested in this unit because they thought that this was going to be like the best counter but if i'm not mistaken i think you can just purge this off like you can just uh you can use king to, to purify and get rid of this debuff on you because it's literally just uh disables ultimate moves it's just like a buff that goes on you um, which isn't as good, obviously, but I mean, I guess if they aren't running King, it helps, but, you know, either way. Same commandment, of course, um, inflicts detonate, which is 20% extra damage per ultimate orb. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, 160, one, or 240, and 400% on one enemy. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, Bedrock Arise inflicts damage equal to 120% of attack on all enemies and then disables buffs and debuff skills for one turn. Okay, so kind of interesting. I don't think, I think this would be the droll I would be more interested in, but I th I'm pretty sure the Petrified droll is a lot better. And then obviously it has the same ult. So nothing too crazy. I'm probably not going to summon on this, but uh, you know, if, if either of these drolls, you know, tickle your fancy, go for it. Uh, new events, moments we remember, top five. A remember, or remember the flower fields, a more powerful Hendrickson is coming for the main story and important events again for all kinds of rewards. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I don't know exactly what this is, but you can get super awakening coins from it. Diamonds, looks like anvils and hammers, which is really nice and some extra rewards. So, I mean, this is kind of cool. Uh, I'm assuming that it's just going to bring back maybe some like really hard story missions or something like that and you'll get better rewards for being able to beat them and stuff like that so that's kind of cool I'm, a I'm actually kind of interested in that um top five moments you remember um event player xp or player rank xp times two that's kind of interesting i don't know if they've ever done that before not that i can remember anyway i maybe just have overlooked that in the past but um obviously i don't have anything that i can really do with that <laughs> but uh uh, I actually just seen this, which is interesting. 
But uh, two times auto clear tickets from patrols, player count event reward increase. So I'm pretty sure these are the, the daily missions. You're going to get extra rewards for all of these, which is really nice because it gives you a couple of extra diamonds um, and some just, uh, you know, extra materials and stuff like that. Deathmatch victory reward times two. So it's going to double all of your deathmatch rewards. Um, for these events right here, it's a really good idea to go into your knighthood if your knighthood is leveled up enough and buy the demon food. So that way it doubles your match rewards again you can get a ton of demon you know like limit break materials and stuff like that with these so i definitely recommend doing that if you can um, but other than that this is just a really nice event in general so make sure you try to do at least a couple of death matches a day try if you know if, if you can um leona's festival farewell and prisoners of the sky movie event eve so this has been something that people have been wanting for a really long time at this point like i'm honestly surprised we haven't gotten it on the uh the english you know the global like version of the game yet but it is the the movie event which they actually add uh elat which is a character from the movie she's like the main girl and then they actually add uh, what's his name? Bellion. I don't think Bellion is good at all, but uh, I don't really know exactly what either of them do. We're just going to do a quick glance because I don't really think that either of them are super great. A lot of people have been using Elat because she has some sort of, I think it's this, increases crit damage of allies by 5% per hero skill use. So people will use this to uh, buff their sort of like passive crit chance this might be interesting to do but if i'm not mistaken a lot of jp banners end up putting belly on as one of the extra characters on it and from my understanding he is just not very good um heals 30 percent of diminished hp every time a debuff is removed from the hero i mean how often does that really happen unless it just you know i guess falls off like if the timer on the debuff code goes away um Shatter for 120% on all enemies, uh, etc. So at least he has an AOE, I guess. And then he can deplete ultimate move, uh, move gauges from one enemy, which is kind of interesting. Flex damage equal to on all enemies. He has an AOE ult, which is kind of good. And it's not a terrible multiplier, but 790 on max is kind of low. But uh, yeah, he's not very good. But the, the passive on Elat is actually pretty interesting. I, I know a lot of people use her for like different kinds of like knighthood boss stuff and everything like that to try to get like a really high score. So if you're into that thing and you want to try to go for like really high scores and stuff like that, I definitely recommend trying to at least get a copy of her. But just I don't I'm not very familiar if they put her on a lot of banners, but I know Bellion is on a lot of banners on JP. So uh, we could potentially see her in the future. I'm not quite sure. Don't hold me to that. Anyways, uh, the three costume sets for Droll are coming, of course. Uh, Droll costume sets, new bundles, uh, which is always really hit or miss. They're either really too expensive and you don't get enough out of them, or, uh, you know, it is what it is. This is actually a really cool picture of Liz. Um, new engravings, they're actually finally giving engravings to Simon and Dogetto, and of course, because Droll is coming, he's going to be added to the engravings list as well. Uh, Green Gloxenia is getting added to the Part 2 banner, and the uh, Race Draw 2 tickets, which is really nice. So, uh, I actually have one Part 2 ticket that I'm, <laughs> that I saved just in case, but, you know, it is what it is. And then a whole bunch of stuff is ending, and they're actually fixing a couple of things. Uh, remove some missions from the Final Boss Taizu's Battle Score application list that were not applied, or not actually applied. It's kind of interesting. Um, attack disable, and then buff slash debuff disable. Interesting. So I guess nothing too crazy. Obviously, kind of a kind of a small patch note, honestly. But at least we know now that the uh, the new banner is you know either skip worthy if you're into it, or you know if you really want droll, you can go for that. But at least you know who's coming. And uh, I guess the other biggest thing is maybe this PVE event, and then the, the fact that we know that Prisoner of the Sky is probably going to be next week. So I guess their banner will probably be out, and uh, Bellion and Elad are probably going to be the boosted units on the banner. So yeah, kind of interesting. Either, either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more content in the future, and I will see you guys in the next video. See you then.